Kishiwazaki, Japan. Pripyat, Ukraine. Tonopah, Arizona. What do these places have in common? Nuclear power. That's what's up next on PS100. <laughs> According to the Nuclear Energy Institute's most recent report, 438 nuclear reactors are currently producing electricity in over 30 countries, with 67 new nuclear power plants under construction around the world. Altogether, these plants produce over 10% of the world's electrical energy needs, and nuclear power plants provide almost 78% of the electricity in France. Of course, harnessing nuclear power is no small undertaking. While nuclear energy safely produces a ton of electricity every day, that energy comes from a chain reaction that can cause a lot of damage in a small amount of time without the proper precautions. On April 26, 1986, it took about 60 seconds for a safety test to turn into a full-blown nuclear meltdown at the Chernobyl power plant, releasing 400 times the radioactive material of the atomic bombing of Hiroshima. How do nuclear power plants produce so much energy so fast? Einstein helped answer that question with his famous equation, E equals mc squared. This equation tells us that changes in an atom's mass create changes in energy. In a nuclear reaction, an atom's protons and neutrons lose mass, which means they also lose energy to their surroundings. This is kind of similar to a chemical reaction, which releases energy as we convert one chemical into another. But with nuclear reactions, energy is released as one element becomes another. Elements are transformed into other elements through either fusion or fission. In nuclear fusion, two smallish atoms combine forces to create a larger atom. And in nuclear fission, a larger atom splits apart to create two smaller atoms. Nuclear power plants run on fission reactions. When a free neutron collides with the nucleus of a large uranium atom, it gets absorbed and loses some of its mass. This change in mass releases energy, which destabilizes the atom and causes it to split into two smaller atoms. Because the protons and neutrons in medium-sized atoms have less mass than those in big atoms, this releases even more energy. A few leftover neutrons are also released, which means they're free to collide with other nuclei, causing a chain reaction that grows exponentially as long as you have more uranium atoms close by. Fortunately, there are plenty of materials that can absorb those neutrons, like cadmium and boron, which are used in nuclear reactor control rods to prevent the chain reaction from getting faster and faster and releasing more and more energy so that you don't have a radioactive meltdown on your hands. When things go right, the reaction produces a ton of thermal energy, which boils water to run a steam-powered electric generator. Of course, even then, you have some radioactive waste to deal with. While getting a fission reaction started is fairly easy, fusion reactions are rather difficult. When two hydrogen atoms fuse together and become helium, their protons and neutrons lose lots of mass and therefore release lots of energy. The problem is, to get close enough for the strong nuclear force to bind their nuclei together, the two hydrogen atoms have to get past the repulsive electromagnetic force. This is tough since the strong nuclear force is short range and the electromagnetic force is long range. One way of getting past the electromagnetic force is to gather enough hydrogen to create a star. Altogether, those atoms will have enough gravitational force to overcome the electromagnetic repulsion between the individual atoms and start a fusion reaction. This happens naturally every time a star is born, but good luck trying to recreate that in the lab. Another way to start a fusion reaction is to heat your hydrogen atoms above 50 million degrees. That'll get them flying around fast enough to break through the electromagnetic repulsion. We've actually been able to create short-lived fusion reactions using this method, and all it took was a huge fission reaction. Unlike the atomic bombs the United States dropped on Hiroshima, which owe their devastating power to uranium-based fission reactions, hydrogen bombs use nuclear fission to get a load of hydrogen atoms so hot they crash and fuse together, unleashing even more destructive power. Sadly, we haven't figured out how to sustain fusion temperatures in a controlled way that doesn't require more energy than the fusion produces. Scientists are working on it, though. If they can figure it out, there's more than enough hydrogen to use as fuel. It's the most abundant element in the universe, after all. And where fission produces radioactive waste, the byproduct of hydrogen-based fusion is, again, just plain old helium. For now, though, nuclear fission is a good substitute. With the control system in place, it's quite safe and it produces no greenhouse gases. Its biggest issues are, sadly, political ones. 
That's it for this episode of PS100. For more science and research opportunities, be sure to check out the links in the description below.